In this episode, I'm going to take that Sony TCRX70ES that had the burned out motor, and we're going to try and fit another motor from a Techniques into it. It didn't go as planned. And uh, I opened up a real can of worms on this one because um, I wasn't expecting the surprise I got. Let's find out. So I'm back working on the Sony TCRX 70 ES. The uh, owner of it found me a, a deck that we can pull a motor out of if the motor will work. Techniques deck. I don't know, the Techniques deck is probably a, it could even be a better deck than the Sony that we're going to fix. Because Techniques had some pretty good pretty good uh, tape decks over the years. But this is what uh, we came up with. So I'll pull the motor out of this one and the belt if it's in any good shape and uh, we'll see if this one will work in the Sony. The first thing we're going to notice on this Techniques deck, which is also, it's also a Mishusta motor, the same as the Sony used, but this one here is a multi-speed motor. It has external control to set the speed. So there's no adjustment on the motor itself. I'll have to put in a, a, a speed adjustment control, which is just, just a pot between the A and the B um, spots on the back of the motor, the contacts on the back of the motor. Other than that, it should it should do the job, just like the other one, um, just like that uh, other uh, what was it a Pioneer or something? The one our Sansui, the one I changed the motor on took the motor out of the cassette, out of the, uh, the ghetto blaster. This is uh, going to be the same type of idea. should be able to make this motor work. I'll just have to add an external control to set the speed. I could take the one off the board here or just put a pot on there and, uh, and go from there. Anyway, um, let's take the motor out on this one and uh, see if I can make it work. So on this, I'll just pop the screws out of the back here. I should be able to pop this chassis apart, get the motor and the belt without having to do too much disassembly. There's a belt and the motor is held in place by just a couple screws and four wires attached to the back. So we get the soldering iron heated up, I'll undo the wires, remove the motor and then I'll go get the Sony and we'll get working on installing it in the Sony. Now I'm thinking that the belt may possibly be okay. It might be the same size belt. It should fit, hopefully. Otherwise I have to source a belt for it. But we'll try this belt. It doesn't seem to be in too bad a shape. So we'll see whether the belt uh, this belt here. See if it's the same size. If it's the same size, then we're 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 good. Otherwise, I'll have to try and find another one, or source one, and order one in.
solution. Just turn OK. Oh. I hope the bearings are OK. I can feel a bit of vibration when I spin the motor. But it's turning, so hopefully it will run. Put the uh, I'll just put this sort of back together. Put the screws in there in the grommets. We'll sort of kind of stick this thing back together to kind of resemble how it's supposed to go. Even though this machine's, I don't think going to see any use ever again. It's probably going to end up in the recycle bin when I'm done here. I also need to harvest the uh, speed control. So we'll just remove that from the board. That way I have the original control. Now I noticed that on the, the way it's configured, it actually goes through a resistor in series 3.9K. So I have to put a 3.9K resistor in series with this control as well across here more than likely otherwise I won't get the right speed but anyway that's got the motor out now we'll just kind of set this piece aside for now and uh, get the Sony going and uh, see if it'll work so here's the Sony back up on the bench the motor is the same physical size so it's going to fit so let's get the mechanism out of here again you gotta open it up and get the front of the door off if I'm not mistaken Remove the screws to hold the chassis in. They're marked with arrows, by the way. The black screws on the bottom here are marked with arrows. One nice thing I always liked about these Sony's is that you could just lift the entire deck out, set aside the rest of the unit, and work on the deck separately. One thing that is different is the size of the pulley, so I'm going to have to remove the pulley and swap it over.
as you can see the holes do line up my little teeny turner to torque these ones down a bit okay now we'll just take the positive and negative wires and transfer them over now something important to notice on this is that most people would think that red is associated with positive and white would be negative but if we look at the wires here the red wire is clearly going to the one that is marked negative and the white wire is clearly going to the one marked positive go figure so that's something to keep that in mind is that you you normally would associate to say the the red wire with positive but in this case it's the opposite who would have thought that Okay, parts of the negative wires are attached. Let's see if this belt that was in the other one is even close to being the right size. It might be. It goes around like that, and then around the motor, and it may very well be the right size belt. I guess we'll find out pretty quick belt in place and we'll put the motor in place and loop it around the motor using the uh, using the little pick to pull it into place or I can tape it to the uh, the, the uh, flywheels and hold it in place but usually you can just pull this out like this put the motor in and Drop it on like that. Oops. That's a bit better. And it looks like the belt is going to fit. Excellent. This is actually uh, going together quite nicely. I still have to deal with the, the speed adjustment, but that won't be an issue. I do have the speed control here. One side uh, to one terminal and the other to the other will uh, control the speed. I may have to put a resistor in series depending on if I've got enough range on this or not but we'll we'll try it without it. The other one had a resistor in series with it so I'll probably I will have to put a 3.9 K resistor. I could actually pull it off the other one for that matter. I'm just going to spin the flywheels and see how they, the belts sit. Looks like they're sitting on the pulley okay. 
and everything appears to be turning as it's supposed to. You see, when I turn one flywheel, you'll see the other one turning. Belt is uh, doing its job. That's turning the motor. Never mind working on these Sony decks. You know, there's some equipment that you like working on, and then there's others that you just despise. And there's a number of uh, a number of pieces on the market that I just hated. Some worse than others. Some equipment was so well designed for service, like this one when you can remove four screws and the deck just unplugs and slides out it makes for easy servicing and then there's other ones where you spend you know a, a couple of hours disassembling and reassembling everything Like the modern VCRs. The modern VCRs to clean the mode switch. Even when you've done it, you know, dozens of times it still takes it still takes time to do it. Okay, everything's plugged back in. Moment of truth. Put power to this thing. Let's see if the motor spins. I sure hope that yeah, nothing's happening. So nothing is happening. I should have plugged that Techniques deck in before taking the motor out, but I didn't have the power cord for it. Uh, I trusted that it worked. When we apply power, now remember the red wire is negative. Okay, here's my meter. Red wire is negative, the negative terminal. Positive terminal here. I got five volts. Hmm. Wonder why the power is so low. Let's unplug it and see what happens. Should have 12 volts there. I got four volts. Hmm. Something else is wrong. I get the sneaking suspicion that this motor is no good either. Okay, 12 volt supply. My 12 volt supply, I'm just going to limit the current down to maybe an amp. Because, you know, the motor won't draw more than one amp. Okay, my supply is set for 12 volts. Negative terminal here. Positive terminal. Nothing spinning. Okay, let's just try adjusting. Let's try adjusting the speed control. We will give it minimum resistance. And okay, we're getting a little bit of turning here. So we have too low resistance. I gotta I gotta put that uh, I gotta put that resistor on there for sure. That 3.9k resistor. Because the motor is just barely turning. So that's one of the things we need to do is increase the resistance. The other one had a resistor in series. Like on the other little circuit board, there was another resistor. So we'll just pop that open and I'll go and uh, get the series resistor from the other, the other motor board. So I'm going to put a 4.7K resistor, which should be in the ballpark with, that, with what I need. Mount that onto the B terminal. And then connect the other side of that 
back up to the control. Now when I give the motor 12 volts, what happens? It spins. I don't know that it's spinning fast enough, but it's turning. I may need to go even higher in terms of I may even have to go higher than that. It doesn't look like it's turning fast enough. So I'll probably have to go higher than that. Let's just see whether it'll turn under power here. It's not even running on this. So, Oh man, what a stupid design. I'm starting to think that this new motor is no good and it's cooked this unit. And I'm going to just do a little test here and see whether my my thoughts are correct. So, you notice I only had 5 volts on here, but I should have 12 for the motor. I'll show you the schematic. Let you see whether what I'm suspecting happened is, is has happened. Let's take a look at the let's take a look at the meter here. Let's take a look at this motor and we'll see positive terminal of course no connection to ground. The negative terminal on this motor is grounded. That's a problem. That's a big problem. The reason why we only have 5 volts is because this does not use a 12 volt supply. It uses a 5 volt supply and a negative 8 volt supply. And this motor has grounded the 8 volt supply to ground. Probably because of this big solder the connection right here on this motor from the Techniques deck. That grounds that motor has been grounded out. So when I plug the motor in, I effectively shorted the negative supply and burned the negative supply out. So there's no negative eight volts. I went and dug up the schematic, and sure as sure as sure as shit, it's got a negative supply. Let's take a look at the schematic. I got my laptop here. We'll take a look at the uh, the layout of this thing. Okay, here's a print. Uh, here's our where are we here? I can't see this. It's too bloody small. I got to look on my on my monitor. Problem with these schematics is they were like big schematics, and when you when they put them up on places like um, Hi-Fi Engine, they print out at normal size, and uh, it's really hard to read anything. But here's the capsule motor right here. You'll notice that the positive line here, if we follow that one up, it goes up here. This is a plus 4.9, 5 volt supply. Here's the negative side. The negative side comes up this way, goes up this way here, goes across. Where else does it go? Uh, it goes this way. Goes up, 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 up. And we end up way down over here somewhere. It's really hard to find on on this. It's much easier to find on the computer because I can blow it up, which is what I've done. But right by where it says Dolby Balance board here, you'll see a positive supply and a negative supply uh, somewhere around here. There you go, B minus. Right in here. So you get B plus supply, you get B minus supply. And it feeds down, 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 this way, across this way, and down here, and down there to the motor. There we go, motor goes this way. Right there. 
So, uh, looks like we don't have any negative supply. I can confirm that pretty quick with my meter, referencing to ground. So power is on. We look at the meter. Okay, one pin is, uh, where are we here? There's our five volts. And this side should be like negative eight. And it's not, it's 0.8. Because we've blown something open, probably a fusible resistor in the negative supply. So I gotta find that. That's also why the cassette door doesn't open anymore. And you see it did until I put the motor in. As soon as I put the motor in, well nothing spun up right away. Well, why is the motor not turning? And uh, well that's the reason why, is uh, because it's grounded out. Now I may be able to take that off and isolate this motor. Hopefully that's the case. I can just take this little solder blob off here that's on the motor and I'll be able to use it. But I have to uh, I have to find now what's been burned out. So I've got the schematic here. I work off computer because printing things out is a joke. So if we look at the schematic a little bit easier when you can blow things up and and see what you're looking for so I'm looking for the B minus supply which comes up from here and see it's minus 7.5 well I said minus 8 close enough so I want to see where it feeds in from and it comes in from here minus 7 feeds everywhere. Let's go back to the power supply and see where it feeds in from. Power supply is over here I think. Where is the power supply? Where is it over here? I'm gonna find it. I really hate working off of uh, off the schematics on computers. I much rather have a big paper schematic that I can uh, can look at. Okay, here's our power supply here. Voltage regulators. And yeah, there's a fusible there's some fusible resistors in here. B minus supply is here, it feeds in. The regulator. That's the regulator transistor for minus 4.7. Gotta find the source for this. Source comes off. That's another. Whoops. Why is that on the screen? Go away. That's a feed into down here. That's a feed into one of the drive ICs for the control motor. I'm just looking for where the source for the the power supply is starting back here so it's going to be in here somewhere there's a couple of fusible resistors right in here right off the power transformer I wonder if one of those is popped let's just check them I'll show you the one that's blown with the meter it's R733 which is right here and it does not look like it's cooked or anything but it is it was open and no thanks to the, the schematic because I still can't find it I've been looking for the stupid thing but we we'll put on the power. If we look at the negative supply here, okay, here's our positive supply, my, our 13 volts and 13 volts, okay, and here's this one here. Negative 15, and this side is plus 9. So that resistor is open. And that one is a uh, 
brown. Well, it, looks, it was probably red, red. It looks like brown, brown now, but I bet it was red, red. It was like a 0 .22, 0 .22 ohm. It's burned. And the red paint has turned to to brown, but it was a, it's like a 0 .22, I believe. Yeah, about a 0.22, and this one, if I measure it, it's it's open. So we'll put a new one in place of this one, and then I'll take that solder off that motor so that we don't have uh, magic smoke. Although this didn't smoke, it just popped just like that, but that's what fuse resistors are designed to do. I, I should have a point, a 0.22, I think. I, I think it's a 0.22. Um, anyway, uh, I should have one, or one close enough to get this one running, and we'll put that heat sink back on these transistors, because I took it off so I could check the transistors out, but they're obviously fine, I think, they're okay. So we'll put the heat sink back on it here, however it goes on. As I can get in behind there and put the screws back in. You know, I'm going to have someone whine and complain because I'm not going to pull the board out and take the part, the the, the resistor out. I'm just going to bridge another one over top of it. And I, I know that I'm going to get, I'm going to get my share of trolls saying I should be taking the board out. And you're probably right, I should be taking the board out. But I learned a long time ago, don't start removing circuit boards if you don't have to because that's when things can happen. Like things can get broken when you start disturbing wires and moving things that don't need to come out, even though it's only held in place by a few screws. There are some of these uh, standoffs that are attached to the base that have to be detached. And there's always a chance when you're undoing these type of things that the board's gonna get a crack in it, something's gonna get damaged. So my rule is if I don't have to remove a board, if I can clip a part out, or just bridge it. This is an open resistor, so it doesn't matter. It's, it's open, so I can bridge over top of it. Uh, if I don't have to take something out to replace a part, I don't. I don't have to take a board out. I don't, because uh, the less you have to do to these things, when you've got this old electronics, the less that you have to disturb, the better, right? And take, to take the board out, I'm gonna have to take out all the screws, undo plugs, right? I don't want to have to undo things unnecessarily because that's always the time that something's going to break. And you take out these ribbon cables, they sound easy enough, but sometimes when you're reinserting them, the copper peels off of it and then you've got a damaged ribbon. So uh, I, if I don't have to, I don't. So let's find a new resistor. Well, the reason I couldn't find R733 and R734 is because they're not R733 and R734 as printed on the board. They're actually 725 and 726. They're right off the power transformer. And the uh, R726 is the, uh, the negative side. It's a 0.22. I don't have a 0.22. I got a 0.1. It's close enough. Okay, it's close enough. That's all I've got. Uh, I'm not going to make a special trip to the big city to get a 0.22 resistor. So I'm going with what I've got. So we have to do sometimes. Uh, difference between a, a 0.1 and a 0.22 is uh, yeah, 0.1 ohms. Not gonna make any difference. It's just being used as a fusible resistor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip this one out of here and put the replacement, probably just mount it through the top here. Is that uh, probably the easiest way to do it? or even just tack it down over top of it. That's the problem with the parts situation these days when all the, uh, the parts places have all shut down and you've got to go out of your way to get parts and you got to order parts in and most places have a minimum order that you've got to make to get, uh, get parts sent to you. So it's uh, it's becoming more difficult to get parts. And more expensive for sure to get parts.
Okay, new part in place. Let's see if our voltages have come back. Of course, a quick, a quick way to tell is see if the door opens. Yes, it does. I see. This is how dumb this this design is. This is ouch. God damn. Careful with these chassis. They're sharp as a knife. Slice your finger off. Um, here we go. Okay, we got uh, minus 7.8 volts and plus 5. So I got to uh, remove this short on the back here where this motor, this design of this motor has grounded out one side. Otherwise, we're going to create the same problem if I try plugging it in again. Something to keep in mind if you're going to try to do what we're trying to do on this one and trying to sub a motor because this obviously is not the correct motor but I'm still pretty confident that I can make it work if I can remove this blob of solder that was put on for the previous deck. Obviously they grounded it to uh, mitigate any noise, right? Just to, to ground it to the chassis but in this case of the Sony Sony don't use a grounded motor. They, it's floating. I need to get a different, a different iron for that. That one's not going to get hot enough. Let me get my other one out. This soldering iron gets a bit hotter with its chisel tip. Yeah, it was soldered right down. The shield cover was soldered right down to the board. That was manufactured like that. I'm going to have to put something in there to insulate. First of all, I have to break this tab off so that it doesn't reconnect to the board. So, all of you out there thinking you're going to do the same thing, you're going to get a motor from another model. Um, Keep that in mind. Sony do things their own way. They have, on theirs, they have a, uh, gra a floating ground. So I'm going to put something in between here. A piece of tape or something. A little bit of black tape. That'll insulate or a piece of plastic or something. There. There we go. That that should prevent it. I hope. I'll put the motor back together if I can. Now we'll test to make sure that there is no continuity between the motor and the. Uh, between the chassis and either of the terminals for the motor. So, negative terminal is open, positive terminal is open, that's good. Let's plug it in and see if the motor spins. Fingers crossed, power on, and the motor spins. Excellent. You guys can probably see the thing spinning there. Let's see if this thing will play. The 10K resistor I initially had on there was far too slow. I've put a 15K on. We're still a little bit slow. I'm gonna have to increase the value of this resistor again because I've got this thing cranked to the fastest position. That this little, and this control came out of the other tape deck as well. So I gotta grab another fixed resistor We'll see if we can get the speed up to the point where we can get it adjusted to the right speed. We'll try a 22K just for the heck of it. Let's see if we can get the speed somewhere where it's supposed to be. Okay, power on. Sounds like it's going fast now. Okay, we might be close. We're 
we're still a little bit quick I think I'm gonna get the uh, I'll put the tone tape in and we'll just take a listen to tone and see how far we are off we're getting closer now so here's my my 440 tone tape is here we'll see how far we're off I'd like to get it around the 18 to 20 K uh, size what is this one here is this an 18 this might be an 18 right down here in the bottom of the of the bucket what is this one measure it with the meter and see excellent that might be right in the sweet spot that I need so we'll just tack this one in and see what happens Gotta watch out for that, that's live. No electro boom moments on my channel. Okay, now we'll see how close this one is. Oh man! I think we might do it. I can bring it up a bit here. Yep. Oops. Control's bending on me. There we go. 440. I'll mount this permanently and then uh, we'll we'll tweak it right up. Uh, see, I'm doing this because I want to show you guys that this can be done that if you've got an obsolete tape deck that's got an obsolete motor you can usually sub them in I'm certainly not making any money on this one doesn't matter how much I charge I will have not made any money on this one because I've got many hours into into working on this one already okay power on let's set the speed it's a 440 hertz tone so let's set it for 440 There we go. That's that's close enough. Okay, we're gonna do a test recording. I just noticed that the um, record level control is and down comes my MP3 player. Yeah, when I when I set up the uh, when I set up the MP3 player, I wired it into my my little Pioneer amp here, but unfortunately. Um, I hooked it up onto tape one instead of tape two so that I could utilize the tape two output to directly record onto the camera for demo demoing stuff right off the uh, right off tape so I gotta keep switching inputs between the CD input and the, the tape monitor I don't have any loop through so I took the secondary outputs from my mp3 player so that I can loop through a tape deck and listen to it through the amp as I'm recording and uh, the cable is not that long Okay, control is uh, down here. We're going to clean the control. It's kind of right down in here. So we're going to get in there with some some cleaner and clean up that uh, record level control. There's two of them. a recording on this tape this is a normal type tape I'm going to use I use Dolby C and uh, when I play it back I'm going to play the original recording that's made on this deck I'm gonna play that back so let me cue up a track and then we'll uh, do a recording
So this is going to be something from the YouTube music library. That, that's just because that's just what came up next on my uh, little playback device here. What did I just do? Record. I guess that's how you do it. Okay. Put the leader lead out there and uh, I'll click play. So I'm going to let this record and then we're going to play it back and you'll hear the playback off tape. This is a normal type tape that we're recording. So let's check it out. As you can see, I'm recording just to zero and I'm using Dolby C. Okay, what the hell else is wrong with this thing? It did not record. Listen to how it recorded. It recorded like crap. Like you don't even, let me crank the volume up. That volume turned all the way up. Oh, terrible. What's wrong with this thing? Is the head bad? Well, let's just try cleaning the head. Maybe the head's just dirty. As I say, I didn't, uh, I haven't cleaned it yet. That was something else that would be done on it. But uh, as I say, when you get used equipment, and this was definitely a used deck that somebody bought, you never know what you're getting yourself into. Buying used equipment on eBay or wherever, and you get stuff that's completely worn out or, or, um, in this case, yeah, the head was really dirty. So that's probably why the sound is so bad. We'll do another recording on this thing here. When I say the head was really dirty, I mean the head was really dirty. That's, uh, could explain why it sounded as bad as it did. We'll make another recording and try it again. Okay, recording's done. I'm sure it's going to sound better this time. Let's listen to it together for the first time. I'm plugging it in to the camera so you're going to hear exactly what comes off the tape without speakers and microphone being involved. Bloody cell phone noise. Okay, that's back to microphone sound. Yeah, Dolby C blows, I know. It sounds terrible. It's, uh, I'm not a Dolby C fan, but I used it on here to see how it sounded. I much prefer no Dolby whatsoever. But then you get all that nasty tape piss, and that's why I never use cassettes, because I always was offended by all that nasty hiss. So I used to use DBX, to get rid of it but the problem with dbx of course is yeah it worked great but you had to use it for playback or you couldn't listen to it at all anyway this sounds sounding good this one so i'm going to say this one's a success and just for reference the resistor that blew up was that one there r726 not r733 as was listed on the board so that just goes to show you that 
quite often schematics are not right or the silk screen on the board is not right anyway that's the circuit that's the one that went bad if you get one of these if you've got one of these Sony or any of these Sony decks for that matter and you're going to substitute a motor verify that one side of the motor is not grounded as I found out the hard way that uh, the motor that I replaced it with the little tab here on the motor you see that little tab was soldered down to the negative terminal ground or connecting the negative terminal to uh, the case which is fine if the unit's operating at plus 12 volts but in this case it wasn't it was 12 volts off of a split supply minus 8 and plus 5 which is kind of a stupid way of doing things if you ask me Sony are you listening real dumb design to use a split supply and have a floating supply to the motor hell that's got to be one of the most ridiculous setups I've ever seen trust Sony to pull crap like that anyway uh, thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one real soon bye for now